Hello, I'm Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is going to take a look at x86 assembly language and a problem that would be seen in the Chapter 5 region of the Irvine textbook that we use for our classroom. So basically creating our own custom functions and using some of the Irvine functions as well. So here is the problem that I'm going to go through here. So I have three functions that I'm going to set up here and show you how to set them up. So I'm going to be the compiler here and work my way down from C++ into assembly. So I have a function called print string that takes no parameters and returns nothing. I have a function called print any string that passes in a string pointer and doesn't return anything else out and prints out that string. And then a function called mathematical function that takes an x, takes a y, adds them together, prints something out, and prints back the, and returns back the value, which gets printed back a second time after it gets returned from the function. So the main function will use all of these. So that's what we're going for in this video. So I already have everything kind of set up, at least to get going here. So you'll notice there's three string variables, and three unique string variables inside of this. Stay safe, everyone. X plus Y equals, and see you around campus soon. So I already filled in how to set that up for the, the, you know, the global strings to get this going to save ourselves a little bit of time. And so now we're ready to get started. So that first function, I would love to just say call print string. And then I could do a call CRLF. And of course, this will not compile because, or assemble, I'm sorry, because print string does not exist at the current moment. So functions go in the code sec section segment like anything else. So I'm going to call this print string proc and print string end p. And now the, the real difference here, you see exit for the main, that is telling the operating system I'm done with the entire program. But all this function does is I want to say I want to return from this function and return back to the, you know, whoever called me. So it's a very big difference there. Exit exits the program immediately and return just kicks me out of whatever function I am in. So now I'm ready to kind of fill in the gaps here. So what I want to do to use the Irvine library, I would want to move into the EDX register, the offset. And since this is a hard-coded string, stay safe, everyone, this safe uh, variable, the safe string that I have listed above. And then I call write string. And I run this. And there, bring it over here. There's my stay safe, everyone. And so it prints what I expect it to print. But now, you know, so 90% of the job is done. I have it doing what I want it to do. And so now the final step is just administrivia, just keeping up and just following these two rules. If a function returns a value, it goes into EAX. That is, we're going to save that for number three. So rule number one does not apply. But for anything else that gets modified by the function, it has to be returned back to its original value prior to exiting and returning back. So in this case, the EDX register is modified by this function. So because of that reason, I have to push EDX and pop it prior to returning back. So the push is always the first thing that happens. The pop is always the last thing that happens right before the return. And say, you run this again, you will not see a difference. But, the, but, the, but you are making a contract that when you do this kind of thing, that when you're doing this kind of thing with a function, that you are going to put back everything. Because could you imagine if you had EDX storing something that was very valuable to you and you had no idea that this function was going to go and blow out that EDX value? You'd be very confused and or angry at whoever wrote that code that at least they didn't warn you about that, that happening. So that's pretty much it for just a simple print string. You know, like move something into EDX registers of call and then push and pop. And so we're going to see actually the next one is actually easier, even though it looks more complicated. But it's the same deal. It's just we're going to be divvying up whose responsibility it is to do parts of this function call. So print any string, print any string. So what I would love to do down here is to say, OK, I want to move into the EDX register this offset of this function C see you around campus soon, which is the campus variable from earlier. And then I can call this print any string function. And then a CRLF. And then 
Give me a second here. There you go. Call CRL. So now it's just a matter of filling in the gap. So because this is a parameter that I'm passing in, EDX over here, that gets done on the main side. Or the, whoever's calling the function has to set up these parameters exactly correctly. And I have to make a note. Something like this. There's no way to know otherwise. How am I supposed to use this function? EDX must be the offset of the string to print. So there's a nice comment to help me out. So, but realistically, all I have to do is call right string here. Because the EDX is already filled. I, I fill in EDX, I call this up, I get to here. All I have to do is call it. And I don't have to do any pushing or popping because I'm not modifying EDX in the function call itself. So all the pieces are there, I mean, minus the push and the pop, but because I'm the one who set it up over here, that's my responsibility, and so and I'm not modifying it, so everything's going to be fine. So now there is your stay safe, everyone. See you around campus soon. So that, get, that takes care of the second parameter case here, the second case here, with sending a parameter and with no output. So the final case is we can kind of combine everything into one giant example here. So what I would love to do, following the same examples here, I would love to say I'll move into the EAX register a 19, I'll move into the EBX register a 23, I would like to call this function, I'll just call it math, just to make it easy on myself, and then I'd like to call an end line, CRLF, and, oops, and then we'll fix the other, the last four lines up or the last three lines up once we're, we're done getting this thing to work. Okay, so I, so I have to get this function going, but I already set up the two parameters, EAX and EBX. So what do we do, right? So math proc, math and P, return like always. Oops. And now what to do, right? So here we go. I want to print out this string. So I already wrote the function that can print any string for me. So as long as I move into the EDX register, the offset of whatever it is I want to print, which just happens to be the equals, I can call print any string. So there you go there, right? So, so and then just to show it works at the moment, there's my x plus y equals right there. So it's it's working. It's taking that string. So it's using. <laughs> It's using, the main is calling a function, which is calling a function, right? So that's, I mean, that's, we do that all the time in any level of programming at any level above, you know, just 1400. So, okay, cool. So now print any string out, and now I want to take the next line of code. Add into EAX, EBX, fair enough. And now because EAX holds the correct value, I can just call write string, or I'm sorry, write int or write deck, it's, it's an int because it needs to be a signed value. And then I'm supposed to be returning. And see, that's the thing, like EAX holds return value. So I did all this work, EAX holds the return value. And so when I return back, EAX down here will hold the return value. And so we're good to go. That's rule number one from up here. If a, if a function returns, it goes into the EAX register. But other than that, just like before, but other than that, anything that's been modified by this function needs to be pushed and popped. So just like before, the EDX register, we don't get away with it this time. We push and we pop. And everything should be good now, at least on that end. So, I mean, slight difference here. It says x plus y equals plus 42. That's just the way the Irvine library works. Unless you want to go in and modify his code, you're kind of stuck with that. But we're still back to perfect because, again, we're, everything's been put back. EAX has been modified, but, again, that's okay since we're basically telling everybody we're going to return a value, so EAX is going to hold the correct value. And EDX is put back, and nothing else has been modified. So we're happy here with this function. So coming back just to finish this thing up, when I get to here now, EAX holds the correct value. So I can do just like before. I can move into the EDX register, the offset of equals. I can call print any string. 
and then I can call immediately after it write int because the EAX register holds the correct value and then CRLF and I run this and you can now see everything comes up twice because that's what's expected to do just to show you that the EAX register was modified on the function side returned back and we can still print it out accordingly and we don't have to do anything because what would be what would I do move EAX comma EAX and like that doesn't make any sense that's as much as a no operation as anything else so let's see can I get this all on one page and it might be a little work here to do that and can you see that who the heck knows but that is basically getting three separate types of functions working and uh, oh I guess I if you want to say EAX holds return value EAX must be one value to add EBX must be one value to add you say you basically want to always make comments for all the inputs and the outputs so other people know what to expect with your code so again that pretty much does it for chapter 5 setting up functions now the sky is the limit when it comes to setting everything up passing using returning just make sure that you return all everything that you know that you modify back to its current state or its previous state before we're returning back that's like a big deal when it comes to everything we do here in assembly language thanks for putting up with me have a great night stay safe everybody uh, see you next time